in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So it's so good to be back here in America. I thank the Lord for everybody who prayed because I'm telling you, God really showed up. And from uh, like Lisa Williams here, I don't know if she's here. Um, oh, there she is. Lisa Williams, we were at a Bible study and she, she looked at me. I mean, all the ladies were praying, but she said, I'm, I'm believing God, I decree for an upgrade. And I'm like, yes. I said, Lord, I am trusting you for an upgrade because you know when you're flying all those miles and everyone I'm traveling with is in business class and I'm stuck in coach, you know, that's not cool. So, and your back gets scrunched and everything else. So that whole day I said, Lord, I am trusting you for an upgrade. I am trusting you and I am believing that it's not gonna cost me a million dollars either. I'm trusting you for this upgrade. I get, I call up, no upgrade. I call, I get to the airport ticket counter. They said, no, it's all, you can't get an upgrade. I said, and the Lord said to me, didn't I tell you, you would have an upgrade? And I'm like, you know how we get? We go back and forth. And I'm like, yes, I know. That's right. You did tell me that. We went down to the gate. And uh, they, the guy at first said no. Then he looked and he goes, oh, my. He said, something just opened up. I have one seat that just opened up. I said, well, how much? Because <laughs> I don't care, how, you know, how much? And then he said to me, well, I don't know. It might be $300. Because if you try to get it that day, it's not as expensive, right? And I'm like, $300. So he said, but you know what? You need to call. You need to make a phone call. He said, because we aligned with US Air. We can't do whatever, whatever. And I'm like, all right. I have three hours here. I might as well just do it. I called him up. And the guy said, yeah, we have one seat. I said, how much? And he said, $75. I'm like, <laughs> I said, I'll take it. <laughs> I will take it. And, you're, and everyone who paid a lot of money to go in business, I'm like, I am the favorite of the Lord. I got it for $75. So. So I was very excited about that, and it's the little things in life. But, you know, listen, I was trusting the Lord for that. I was able to recline all the way back, and so I'm so tall. That's right, and I needed that. But, um, you know, God, God, you know, those little things. And then I had, and I'll share a little bit about an encounter that I was not going to share about, but the Lord made it very clear to me that I was to share today about this encounter in Israel, uh, Romania, you know, and Romania, you know, these people had to trust God, period. They have to lean and partner with Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, <laughs> Spirit, it's a new word. They, you know, you just see the miracle working power of Jesus. And, you know, these people who we were at this church, uh, Pastor uh, Daniel Matea, I think his name, something like that. And um, he's been here in America to preach. And the, the husband and wife start sharing a little testimony about, you know, their, their journey. And, you know, they, it's still communist, not as bad as it had been. But they had to swim across the Danube River to escape the communists shooting at them with their machine guns. And they were telling how Holy Spirit directed them every step of the way. And how even at one point, the wife said, where we were going, and they, they started shining her spotlight on the river. And they went back. And she said, we didn't even know why we were going back. We were so desperate to cross over. And we heard to go back. And had we had gone, because other people were killed, they were shooting people. And they were just talking about Holy Spirit and the reality of partnering with Holy Spirit. And then they asked us to pray for them. And I'm like, <laughs> I haven't crossed over the Danube River. I haven't had anybody shoot at me, and I'm not praying for you. And, um, you know, but it was just that kind of faith and that tenacity. And so when we were there, these people fasted and prayed for days before they came. They prepared themselves. They were going to grab hold of whatever God had. And, and I think that that's a little bit missing here in America and that God wants to restore that and God wants to shift things and get us to that place of that hunger for God and knowing that God is calling us into a whole nother level, which I'll, I'll get into in a little bit. Then we went to India and how many of you know, remember I said no bugs? Now, now, how many of you know that that's a miracle? For even for those of you who are from India, that that I did not see one bug in India, not one bug, not one bug in my room, not one bug. And um, you know, we saw a lot of things out in India, but I didn't see any bugs. I didn't even see a fly. And so it, it is a miracle because you call those things which be not as though they are. I said, Lord, you know that India was one place that, you know. I, 
I haven't always prayed about going to. And I said, but I'm, I will go. The people were the most amazing people you ever want to meet. We, were, we went to one of the orphanages out there where these kids are just abandoned because the parents can't afford them. And so they just leave these kids. And, and then the, the sister of the guy that, uh, who had the orphanage, she um, oversees uh, this ministry called Restoration, and I forget what the whole thing was called, but something Restoration, where they are helping these children escape sex trafficking, which is huge out there. And the age group of choice is three to six years of age. So now we're talking depravity to the utmost. I mean, perversion, demonic, uh, you know, control, but these people have hope for freedom. These people had a hope, and so we're in these meetings. People came from Nepal. They came from China. They came, they, they days, and so there were some rooms available that were on the premises. They had seven to 10 to 12 people sleeping in one room. They just had cots. You know, they, they were hungry. They wanted to learn about the apostolic. I said, the apostolic? They wanted to learn about the apostolic. They wanted to learn about church government. They wanted to learn about breaking out in greater miracles and greater power. And, um, and I'm thinking again, you guys need to lay hands on us. Oh, my gosh, the hunger and the desperation that's in their hearts. And listen, God's not, you know, I, I, please hear me today when I say this. I, you know, God's not looking to browbeat any of us. He just wants us to know that we have so much going for us and that there's so much that we can uh, flow in and operate in that we haven't attained yet. We haven't been there yet. And that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about today, that God wants to break through in our lives in a greater dimension. And, and the thing that really stuck out with me was just the hunger and the desperation. They would just come up to you and just bow their head like that. And they just wanted us to, to lay hands on, on them and just pray. And, and, and that was even just good enough for them. And, um, and the miracles that we heard about and the healings and the deliverances, just, just believing God for, for blind eyes to open, believing God for total transformation, total deliverance, not, not wallowing in, 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 in self-pity. I mean, I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I would behave. I, I don't know. But you never know until you're in it. But the tenacity and the, and the perseverance, and, and I am going to support this ministry with these kids and the sex trafficking out there. It's something when you know the people, you know, and, and you do know where the money's going. And, and just that one of the pastors, when we were out there, um, he was supposed to be in the meeting. And uh, what happened was they arrested him. They were torturing him while we were having this meeting and we were like broken hearted and we were really praying and I still don't know what the outcome because they didn't release him while we were there. These people are persecuted and these people are saying we will not give up. We will not say no to Jesus because Jesus is our only hope. We will not say no to Jesus. And I said, well, there's no other king but King Jesus. Amen. And uh, man, I said, Lord Jesus, you know, so when I was preparing for this message, um, the Lord, I, I just couldn't get it. <laughs> I just, it took me forever. I got it this morning. And I said, Lord, I don't know. I was struggling. I, my sister Linda, I said to her, I just can't seem to get the download as to what the Holy Spirit wants me to share about. So um, I had this encounter in Israel that I said, I said, I'm not going to share it because I, I don't understand it fully. I mean, I do, but I don't, and I'm not, I'm not ready f to share. So this morning, I pick something up, I'm moving a book, and this card falls out, falls out onto the floor, and I look, and, and it has to do with mercy. And I'm like, okay, all right, Lord. <laughs> so I am going to share about the encounter I had in Israel. So the Lord said, well, before you go into this encounter, what I want you to share from is Deuteronomy chapter 1. It all will tie in. And bear with me because I was trying to look up scriptures real fast this morning and trying to hear what he was saying. So in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, Lord, let me just pray. So, Lord, I just thank you for your presence. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are uprooting root systems in our lives, O oh God. And, Lord, we are crossing over in this season of 5778 of the new door, of open door, Lord, of new beginnings. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. So in Deuteronomy, you know, I love the book of Deuteronomy. 
and he had me go to Deuteronomy chapter 1, and it says in verse 2, it is 11 days journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. Now it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him as commandments to them. And after he killed Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, who dwelt in Ashtaroth and Edrael, I'm, I'm obviously not Hebrew, on this side of the Jordan in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law, saying, in verse 6, the Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. And the Lord said to me, We have dwelt long enough at this mountain because we have to shift mindsets. We have to shift attitudes, or as my mother would say, attitude, you know, <laughs> attitude. We have to shift the way we've been going about things that can can cause us to have blockages in our life. Amen? The Lord says that we have got to see through his lens of faith right now. And so when you look up the word Horeb, it's really interesting. I mean, I've read this a thousand times. It says it's 11 days journey, which took them 40 years. It was supposed to be 11 days. How many of us have gone through have gone around the mountain forever, forever, forever. The Lord says no more delay. He's going to cause us to come off that mountain. And the Lord says, but it's a yielded, surrendered heart. And even all the songs today about the blood of Jesus, I'm like, yes, Lord, you're confirming the word. But it says, it's, he says here in verse 2, it's an 11-day journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir of Kadesh Barnea. Horeb means a waste place, a slow decay. He said, there's this journey that God is pulling us from of this slow decay, of this waste place of unbelief, of this waste place of doubt, of this waste place of fear, this 11 day, that should have been 11 days. But he's saying, this, this journey that we've been on, where we have been in unbelief or, or fear or whatever, he said, you're coming off the mountain. Yeah. And he said, so it says here, of Mount Seir, I look that up. I'm like, holy moly. It means, listen to this. The root word is goat. <laughs> Fear. Dread. Stubbornness. Anybody ever battle with uh, any of those uh, emotions? <laughs> God is saying, listen, this slow decay of this waste place of stubbornness, of fear, of dread, an enemy to our faith is fear. He says, you're coming off this mountain. The Lord says, I love you, and my mercies are new every morning, and it's my mercy that's going to enable you to cross over. It's not in your strength. The Lord's saying, it's in my strength. You're not going around the mountain any longer. Could you say that? I'm not going around this mountain. I said, Lord, I am tired. You know, we all have certain situations in our lives where, where it's just like forever. Like, when the heck am I going to come off this thing? But God, I said, he said, it's my mercy that endures forever. It's my mercy that will help you but get a mindset don't say oh lord i want it but i can never do that oh i'm just stuck in this mess no we, that's why we have to have a mind shift so um it says here then he goes on to say the amorite represents weak and feeble enemies of the past so you know in one of the portions here you know he was killed but amorites that amorite spirit is always there trying to keep us weak and feeble and doesn't want us to move forward and and so in the king james version where it says the lord our god spoke to us in horeb he god is speaking to us in this waste place of slow decay god is speaking to us maybe not everything has been that for you but in some of us you know we have some waste places right some slow decay god is speaking to us and saying, listen, I want you to come out of that place of stubbornness or that idolatry to your mindset, to your way of doing things. That stubbornness that says that, you know, I've been this way, I've tried, I have prayed, and nothing's happened. The Lord says, well, it's a new day. It's a new day. We have to cut off that, even that, that despair and defeat. The Lord is saying to us, you're coming off that mountain. So then it goes on to say, uh, the Lord our God, oh, I said that. You have dwelt here long enough at this mountain. Now, that word dwelt means to, to, be, to be inhabited, to abide. It means to marry. 
It's a covenantal thing, like you, you joined, you became one with a lie. With the lie that says you're going to go around this mountain again. You're going to always have your financial situation. You're not going to have, you know, family stability. You're not going to have breakthrough in your life. See, you have dwelt long enough. So we have to cut covenant today with lies. We have to come out of that place of uh, agreement where the enemy said, you're too weak and feeble. You can't cross over. You're too weak and feeble. You're, you won't have resurrection life in your life. You won't have breakthrough in your life. We have to cut covenant with the lie. And so it says you dwelt there long enough but in the king james it says here you've dwelt here long enough at this mountain but the king james says at this mount i look that word up and it means um to loom where did i write that to loom over you and i thought that was interesting because what is the lie that's been looming over you because you know we're supposed to speak to our mountains we're supposed to speak to the mountains and command it to fall into the sea. We're, who is that great obstacle that has come before us? The Bible says in Zechariah, we're to shout grace, grace to that mountain. And when I looked it up, it said looming over. I thought, oh my gosh, Lord, what lie has been looming over you forever? What is that lie of addiction? What is that lie of defeat? What is that lie of fear? What is that lie? That, that has been looming over you that says you can't cross over. And I said, ooh, Jesus. So, you know, I was, I was just meditating on, on a couple of the things. And, you know, like when the Lord said to me, you'll have your upgrade. Well, I believed it. And then I was reasoning, like, oh, I don't know. How is this going to happen? Lord, I don't know if I can afford, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know how you reason. And we reason ourselves out of miracles. We talk ourselves out of it, and that's where the word, and I know you know this because I always talk about this when I preach about the word having to have, you know, uh, priority in our lives, but we are, we sang about an army. We sang about we are an army, yeah. that God is rising up, raising up for this, this time. We are in a place like never before, and the Lord spoke to me, and he has spoken, I'm sure, to many of you, but we are entering into that Joel 2 season in Acts chapter 2 yeah. where signs and wonders and miracles, God is going to break out, but I'm going to tell you something. It's going to break out wherever you're at. Yeah. It's going to break out in the, in, the, in the marketplace. It's going to break out. I'm telling you, like Peter always says, uh, you know, we, what is it? Like 95% of people are employed somewhere, right? <laughs> and then 5% are in the church. So how many of you work? Okay. Well, the spirit of the Lord is saying that he is calling you to be the mouthpiece wherever you're at, to break through, to prophesy, to be the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the healers and deliverers out where you're at. And that the Lord is, like, you go into work mode. I get that. I get, I know, like, you, my husband can't share a lot. But the Lord can give you creative ideas and witty ways and how you can speak the word of the Lord without being churchy, right? Without being Rosanna, Dana, 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 or acting like church lady. But you can get the word of the Lord and be very sharp and very, not I mean sharp in a negative way, sharp where you, you unlock things that have been locked up in people's lives. That's the power of the prophetic word that God wants us to do. God wants us to walk in that breaker anointing. And, and, and so church is for um, training and equipping, and, but, but we're supposed to be doing this wherever we're at, right? I mean, you've heard this. This isn't anything new that you haven't heard here. And so just a little um, commercial in January, uh, Cindy Jacobs uh, came and she, had, she prophesied over me and she said, when are you gonna do the School of the Prophets? And I'm like, oh. I said, Lord, there's so many out there. And she said, you need to do the school of the prophets. And then she said some other stuff that went along with it. And so in January, we're going to do a school of the prophets. And we're going to train and activate. You know what? We, a lot, most of us here have heard a lot of training and teaching on the prophetic and walking at, 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 at your seer's gift and the watchman gifts and the prophet. Well, the Bible says the name is believe the prophet. What? And you shall prosper. So I'm just obeying the word of the Lord, and, and I'm looking forward to it. But, but I just saw a whole nother level, especially in the marketplace when I was praying. I said, the Lord's saying, he's saying, listen, we can't, you know, and I'm sure this isn't any of you, but we can't leave our Christianity just here in church, right? 
on Sunday, and I know a lot of you, honestly, and I'm not being smart, Alec, about this. I know a lot of you don't, but, but it's a whole other dimension that God is calling us to walk in. He's saying, get out of the whatever that thing is that's trying to hold you back, that lie. You might have a lot of family issues. The Lord's saying, I'm greater than that. Don't, you know, we can't, we, you know, we don't want to dwell and we don't want to just focus on what's not. We want to focus on who the greatness of our God is and decreeing that thing. We've been there long enough, long enough. And so what has been looming over you has to shift. So what is the attitude? What, what are the things? Are you just flowing in your natural mindset? We are a supernatural people. We, are, we have five senses. Well, we have five spiritual senses. God wants us to hear the word of the Lord. He wants us to see. He wants us to sense. He wants us to feel. You know, he, we have all these senses, and a lot of times we don't even recognize half the time that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. Because we, let, let me just say this, we try to reason everything out. God's ways are above our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, right? So I was trying to reason, well, all right, Lord, I know you can do this, but why should I get it? But, Lord, I know I can get this up, but why should I? What? Right? We do these stupid things. And so God is saying to us, the shackles off our mind has to come off. It's a time for new beginnings. It's a time to walk in the warrior mantle that God has called us to walk in and to operate in. By warrior mantle, I don't mean that you're going around smacking everybody over the head, calling saying, Try. it's knowing who you are and not backing down and walking in your authority and understanding the greatness of our God and how God wants to break through and God wants the supernatural to be broken through in our lives. It's not just for a select group of people. We are to be, and I think Barbara Wintrobel coined this term, supernaturally natural. It's just something that we see, we expect, we command the thing to, to shift in Jesus' name. A lot of us will say it, we're like, yeah, amen, amen, but when push comes to shove, we don't do it. Or we, we reason ourselves out of it because a lot of times our carnal thoughts are, are greater than what the Word of God is saying, amen? Does that only happen to me or does that happen to you? So Holy Spirit, he wants us to partner with him in a way that we haven't. Where, where maybe because we've had resistance in the past, we pull back. We sit here and think, what is she talking about? <laughs> Does she know what I've gone through? I have prayed and I have tried. But, you know, and God's saying, yeah, that's right. Now, now let me do it. Now I want you to lean upon me. Now I want you to be like those people in Romania and in India that have no other choice. You know, we have a headache. What do we do? We take an aspirin. Why fight for something I can just take a pill for and just, you know, deal with it, right? But in, in India, and even, they, they don't have that luxury. And again, I, it's, it's not like I didn't feel condemned. I just thought, oh, wow, well, Lord, I want that. They're walking in a faith. They're, they're, they're standing, and many of us do that. But then, you know, you get discouraged. You know, things have happened. And you, you look at things in America. You look at, at situations that have gone down. The Lord says, get your eyes off that. Get your eyes redirected and refocus on me, the mighty man of God that I am. And let me shift things in your mindset because it's got to start here before we can move and, and before we can have that breakthrough. So... Um, I had some other notes, and I don't know where I put them. I, I have notes. I, as you can tell, I have things all, all over the place here. So, um, so I, you know, the Lord said to me, we're, we're, it's a new, new um, he said it's a new day. It's a new day of, uh, that we're breaking through. It's, and it's, you know, when you're breaking through hard ground, when you're breaking through and you're, you're going to plan something, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's not always so easy. You know, you have to get all the rocks out. You have to, you have to, um, you know, break through that hard terrain. But that's the Lord saying it's, it's not by might. It's not by power. He said it's by my spirit that I will cause this shaking and I will cause this breaking to break off. And so one of the things that, where's my phone at? Um, I just need my phone. Um, one of the things that um, God uh, wants to break off of us is like this, this looming thing over us of defeat, of where, oh, you know what? I'm good with going to church. I haven't had too much of a breakthrough in my life. I've been this way. Nothing's happening. 
that's, that's like a covering that has come over. I'm talking about the church at large. That's, that's something that, that just has tried to blind us and not let us see really who we are in Christ and, and the authority that we have. And, um, and the Lord says we are the army. We are that Joel 2 army. He's saying blow that trumpet in Zion. We are, in January, we're going to start fasting. And, you know, fasting really does break through situations in our lives. And we are going to start with 6 a.m. prayer again. And, you know, we're all called to intercede. We're all called to pray. It's, the Bible says, can you not tarry with me, what, for one hour? And, um, you know, and, and, and I feel that God is awakening this part where we all gather together in unison and pray and worship together. It's really vital that we do this and, and put down. One of the things that we were all talking about on a trip was how these people were inconvenienced greatly. And I don't know about you, but I don't like to be inconvenienced, really. But they didn't care because they, they said, I am not letting anything get in my way. I'm not going to allow anything to stop me. In um, Israel, Chuck had this, um, he was preaching, and I took a picture of it, and it says here, will you postpone your future or gain momentum? And, and that's what I was thinking about in Deuteronomy 1. How long are we going to stay on this mountain? How long will there be unbelief or lethargy? Or, yeah, 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 then you go back to the same old, same old when you go home. Yeah, like, I don't know about you, but I, I said, Lord, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to move forward. And I know what that is, is, is me yielding and praying and getting inconvenienced getting up when he says to get up to pray, coming out to prayer, uh, you know, meditating on the word. You know, we, 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 we have marvelous books out there, and I like to read, but we have to get the word in us. The word is supernatural. It's the word of God. It's the word known, the power of the name of Jesus. We were singing about Jesus. Listen, Jesus can set you free. Jesus is our deliverer. Jesus Listen, I heard Lance Wallnow say, and I think it was on a podcast or something, it was just this week, he said, the pharmaceutical company is taking over deliverance for the church. Did anybody hear that? Right? And I'm like, that is so right on. Not opposed to anyone, you know, whatever you need, you know, whatever. But Jesus came to set the captives free. Jesus came to uproot root systems in us that have kept us in bondage where the enemy is saying to you on this mountain, this is your lot. You're stuck here. You, you've been in covenant with the lie, and we're going to break covenant with lies today because the enemy is fighting, but Jesus destroyed the enemy, took the keys away from him, and there's a deliverance power that God wants us to know that we can operate in. Every single one of us are called to walk in that and to break the chains. We were singing it. This isn't just song service. This is reality of what God is saying to us. The enemy has messed with our minds long enough where half the people think they're stinking crazy and that they can't get out of the message they're in. And God is saying, you have my mind. You have the mind of Christ. But do we believe what word is saying? I said, Lord, where I had just, I, I, he was showing me, he's saying, listen, you don't believe me when I'm telling you about certain things that I'm going to cause breakthrough because you question me. And I said, Lord, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief, oh God. And, you know, so what am I doing? I'm getting the scriptures. I'm meditating on the word. I'm like, Lord. And you know what? It's like Popeye, the sailor man. Remember, he ate his spinach and his muscles grew. That's what the word does. And I'm like, Lord, you are changing my eyesight here. So in Israel... I'm, I was happy in the row I was in, and, and they're calling me to come up front. And I'm like, oh. So I go sit up front. They had, uh, it was called the Gathering of the Clans. And they had um, people on this band that came. It, it was just a, a uniting of these groups that normally are at war with each other from Wales, from Scotland, from Ireland. We're in the land of Israel, and there are other, they're English people, British, you know, and so all right, that's cool, we're there, I'm like, hmm, whatever, so worship's going on, and the power of God hits, I haven't experienced something like this in a long time, right, I'm in the front row, not real happy about it, and I'm sitting there, and I mean, this, I hear footsteps come in, 
like I, 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 everything was drowned out and I'm hearing these footsteps come in and I'm like, no, Lord, not now, not now, God. And I'm standing there and I am weeping and the power of God's on. I can't know if my eyes, if I tried and I'm standing there and I have James Vincent from Gloria's line that she, and I am losing uh, my marbles here. Hysteric, and I'm horrified. I'm like, oh, Jesus. I'm trying to be very dignified and not, you know, and I'm like, and so my, my dear friend John Price is making fun of me as I'm going through my, my encounter with the Lord, but he doesn't know. I don't want to give him a snack. I couldn't, I couldn't respond to anything, you know, and I'm like, and I'm weeping, and I couldn't. It just, it was just powerful. So what I see is this. I see I hear these footsteps and I hear angels walking in and they're carrying the mercy seat. And on the mercy seat is the blood of Jesus dripping off this mercy seat. And, and, I'm, and I'm watching it and, I, and he's saying, my mercy is not just forgiveness. It's a force. It's a power. My mercy, my kindness, and my compassion breaks through the generations. And I see the, the blood come down to the root system in the land of Israel. And I see it coming down. He's saying, my mercy is setting this land free. And then it went to the nations, and it came here. And he said, my, my mercy and my blood is setting free your bloodlines. My mercy, my mercy is, is, is releasing my compassion and my kindness he said my mercy my mercy and then he was pouring uh, I, I'm assuming it was oil I don't know some stuff on me and and I'm and I'm and I am I mean lose I have one eye with eye makeup the other no I mean I mean and I'm like dear God why now you know he's like you're gonna lose all dignity when when I'm showing up and I said Lord then I of course I, I'll be honest with you I said why are you talking to me about mercy? Why did you say something else about revival or something? <laughs> and um, the Lord's like, hmm. So, um, so the Lord was just speaking to me about his kindness and his mercy. So I started looking up some scriptures on his mercy. And, you know, the Lord says in James, as we know, mercy triumphs over judgment. And, and God wants us to understand that he's for us. There's a covenantal promise. He wants us to have our inheritance. He wants us to gain that momentum, not dwell on the mountain any longer, not have things postponed any longer, but he wants the mercy, wants us to understand that we have access to come before the throne room of grace boldly. We have that access, but sometimes because of our reasoning, we punish ourselves. Or we think we've really messed up, or we, we've done this wrong, or, or we just don't believe God. And the Lord's saying, thy mercies, I didn't even have time to look a lot of this up because I wasn't going to share in it today, but in Lamentations it says, my mercies are new every morning. And I, it, like, it hit me, and he's like, he's like I, my kindness is so right there for you. My kindness and my mercy is so right there for you to have breakthrough and freedom in your life. It's there. Thy mercies are new every morning. So in, in Micah, um, you know, 6 8, it says, He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. See, God wants us also to sow mercy. You sow mercy, you reap mercy. Not judgment. We are so quick to point our finger. And we're so quick to tell everybody what all they're all doing wrong. Meanwhile, you need to look at your own self and talk about your own self about what's going wrong. But the Lord's saying we need to act justly and to walk humbly and to know the mercy of God. There's another scripture. It says in Micah 7, 18, who is a God like you who pardons sins and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry but forever delight to show mercy see that's our God I was thinking of Moses when Moses cried out on behalf of the rebellious Israelites because that's when God would get so aggravated it was through unbelief and rebellion and disobedience that's where we have to check our heart and say Lord where have we put a limitation on you because we have not walked in belief 
where we have limited you. I'm going for it. The Lord says, you know, out there, it's so dark. But he says, where there's darkness, light will shine ever so greatly. And we are the light. Peter preaches from a message, and it says, glow in the dark Christians. We are that light, but we have to see it. We were singing about identity today. That's who we are. The zeal of the Lord has consumed us. See, but on that mountain of defeat and despair, the enemy is saying, you don't have it, what it takes. Listen to her with her big mouth. Listen to her. She's all talk. No, that's a lie of the enemy. Because God is saying, we are it. We have the answer. Look at what's happening with everybody. Chuck uh, Pierce prophesied and said that there was uh, people, all this confession of all this sexual sin, all this stuff was going to start happening. This is good because you can't, you can't uh, move forward unless you repent, unless you get right before the Lord. So, again, I, I just want to admonish you and encourage you where you have allowed, I'm not saying you leave your brain at the door, but where you have allowed your, your reasoning to overtake the supernatural, the supernatural wonder of God, we have to repent for that. I, I was, um, I'll close, what time is it? Okay. Um, so Moses cried out on behalf of the people. Oh, this is what fell out. It says, mercy, our new currency. And I had no intentions, honestly. And I'm like, when it fell, because I'm like, Lord, will you just make it clear what I'm supposed to preach today? I just don't know. And he said, I told you. And Right? Because I said, no, I'm not ready to teach on mercy. No, I'm not ready. And, and, you know, I'm like, okay. I said, because I couldn't get anything else. So then, and I'm going to close with this in, in, in uh, Mark chapter 9, no, 10, about blind Bartimaeus. Now, there are a lot of instances in the Bible uh, about God's rich in mercy. Ephesians 2 talks about he is rich in mercy. Proverbs 3, 3 through 4, it says, Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. So you find favor and high esteem in the sight of God. It's his mercy. Listen, you may not even comprehend what I'm saying here, but your spirit is getting it. The Bible says in Psalm 111.4, he is full of compassion. Psalm 115.5, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. Psalm 119.64, the Lord, O earth, I mean, it says the earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. In Psalm 119.156, great are your tender mercies, O God. Psalm 119.56, 45 8 the lord is gracious and full of mercy and compassion and it goes on and on and on and and you know psalm 103 oh bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name who heals all of our diseases and forgives our iniquities his mercies encircle us his mercies surround us and when you look up that word mercy there it means the womb it's the El Shaddai of God the mothering side of God the nurturing one who is there not only to, uh, to correct us and discipline us but love on us but to nurture us and to love on us and to fill us and to satisfy us with good things that's his desire for us so so in um Mark chapter 10, where am I? In the, with Deuteron, I mean, uh, with blind Bartimaeus. In verse 46, it says, Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great multitude with blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. Now we know Jericho represents circumcision. So there's that sanctification. The word came forth about us sanctifying our hearts. Uh, uh, just, Lord, wherever I just am not seeing it, Lord, show me. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your rich mercy in my life. Thank you for your mercy and your desire to put your arms round about us and push us all forward. See, he's not, you know, sometimes we have this mindset that God's ready to knock us all out. That's not the, listen, God is not mocked, but his mercy his mercy is new every morning. He doesn't want us to walk in this religious, self-righteous, rotten attitude that thinks, you, you know, like you, you, got, you, got, you got your intellectual thing going on. His ways and his minds are above yours or his mind. We have the mind of Christ. And, and you know what? You can give your theological dissertation, but it's setting anybody free. Jesus came to set the captives free. 
And he's not concerned so much about our opinion. I have to be honest with you. He wants us to yield and be surrendered to what he thinks and to what he says. Because for too long, the church at large has been in bondage and captivity. And the Lord's saying, listen, I'm giving you an opportunity. He said, here's my mercy. Here's my compassion. The blood of Jesus has come to set you free. The blood of Jesus is here to deliver you out of situations that you don't ever think you can get out of, that you don't ever think your family can come out of. You don't think financially you can come out of. He says, my ways aren't your ways and I'm asking you to get before me to fast to hear the spirit of the Lord and I'll give you a step by step by step by step direction I said Lord I want that listen he's saying to me he goes you got to get off your mountain of what you just know you go to what's familiar to you you go and do the same old same old he says I'm telling you to sit before me in this hour to hear what my word and what I'm telling you and how to move forward in this season I said Lord there are too many people there are things that you want us to do you didn't call us just to be someone said today just sitting on our behinds here and not doing anything you are calling all of us to be a lighthouse so blind Bartimaeus is in Jericho there's circumcision of his heart. He's with his religious group. He had a beggar's license. You know, a lot of us, you know, we think we have to beg God. We don't have to beg God. It's been provided for us. But he's, he's there begging, and the religious system around him wants to keep him down, wants to keep him on lockdown. You can't move forward. Who do you think you are? You've been this mess for so long, you're not coming out of that. And so... He says, there was a great multitude, and he's begging. And it says, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That word heard, when you look it up, it means he got revelation. He perceived there's something about this man. What do I have to lose? Blindness defeat Jesus have mercy on me that's why we come to prayer that's why we get out of our stinking rotten attitudes with this mindset that thinks you know more than Jesus God is saying humble yourself and act justly and call upon the mercy of God so what did he do he was crying out and they're telling him to shut up they're saying you know be quiet don't you cry out any longer and he said yeah Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I am not listening to this religious structure any longer that's telling me to sit down and shut up. I am crying out. Listen, God is undignified. He's saying, David said, I'll be even more undignified than what I've been. I am not settling down. We are not the church of the dead. We are the church of the living, resurrected God. And God is saying, where is your authority? Do you believe in whom he is? Do you believe in the greatness of our God? Can't get off the mountain. We can't dwell there any longer. I am not dwelling in unbelief. I am not dwelling in defeat. I know that when I'm praying and you're, you're, you're really thinking, oh, God, I really, I'm trusting you for this breakthrough. But then it didn't happen the way you think. It ain't over until he says it's over. God wants us to birth the new. And the enemy is so intimidated by us walking in liberty, in birthing new things, in breakthrough, in deliverance for our families, in breakthrough in finances. God is saying, I want that militant people to rise up. Be like blind Bartimaeus. And I love what Jesus did. He said, and when he heard, and Jesus, he's saying, God, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. Awaken me. Have mercy on me. The, you know, I call him out on your, your compassion for me to see, oh, God. And, and, you know, they were telling him to shut up. And then verse 49, so Jesus stood and commanded him to be called. And then they called the blind man, saying to him, you be of good cheer. 
You rise. He's calling you. You know what rise means? Awake from sleep. God is calling us to awake out of our slumber, awake out of sleep. He's saying, I am not going to go on this mountain, stay dwelling on his mountain any longer. In verse 50, it says, and he threw aside his garment and he rose and came to Jesus. And that garment represents that old beggar's cloth. I don't know about you, but I'm throwing away my garment of, of defeat, my garment of delay, my garment that's holding me back. I am not identifying. I'm not in covenant with that lie any longer. And then he was able to see. God has given us, and I'm telling you, resurrection life. He's given us access. As a man thinketh, so is he. God is opening up our mindset. He's showing us. He's saying, listen, cry out to me, and I will show you things. I will allow you to see in ways that you've never seen before. But it's a heart attitude thing. And I'm telling you, allow him to circumcise your heart. You know, and sometimes we have such resistance in our heart. Yeah, ask the Lord if you got a demon. <laughs> Listen, sometimes, you know, we have this mindset, and again, it, it keeps us on lockdown. You know, Jesus came to set the captives free. There's an energy of the Holy Spirit that he's releasing that he wants us to become one with. There's that energy. I don't, you know, there was that season. I know when I first got saved in 79, and the lady who mentored me was an ex-madam. She was an ex-madam, and listen, this lady prophesied. She cast out devils. I thought every church member did that until I went to church and backslid because I was told everything I was doing was wrong and that you can't prophesy. You're a woman. You can't do this. Well, we don't believe in deliverance. That was for then. You're a Christian. You're a new creation in Christ. Really, that's why half the church is so bound because we all want to think that there's nothing near and that we're okay when we're not. But if Jesus is providing a way of escape, why don't you take it? <laughs> Jesus says it's free. I died on the cross for freedom. So, you know, I know it gets people all bent out of shape and, you know, but listen, Jesus got every religious demon upset. He got every one that, was want, that wanted to stay in a mindset. He got everybody pretty upset. He got me upset <laughs> when people used to talk to me about Jesus. I didn't want to hear about it. I said, these crazy people, leave me the heck alone. Meanwhile, I'm about to have a nervous breakdown, but leave me alone. I don't need Jesus. But see, God blind, the enemy blinds you. But is he blinding you now? We can be saved a gazillion years and just go through the motion, the motion, the motion. You're covenanting with that lie. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm cutting it off. He says, consider not the former things of old. Consider not the former things of old. Have you not known it? He says, I'm doing a new thing. It will spring forth, says the Lord. So you need to prophesy it. You need to speak it. You can say, yeah, but you don't know what I've gone through. He knows the beginning to the end. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. He knows what's happening. You prophesy. You speak to them dry, dead bones. You prophesy resurrection life to that dry situation. Listen, God knows you want to be married. God knows he wants break, you want breakthrough. You need financial breakthrough. He knows it all. Let's not limit him. We're going to break off all that limitation. Be like blind Bartimaeus. I am not keeping quiet any longer. My spirit is rising up. My spirit man is getting strong. There's an energy of Holy Spirit that he's releasing. That's got, you know, you're breaking out of a structure. You're breaking out of that Philistine antichrist structure that says no to us. That says we have to conform to all the nonsense that the government is saying about abortion and gay marriage. We, listen, we are a voice. We are a voice. Now, I don't mean demonstrating. I mean prayer power. Prayer changes things. Prayer power. When we are united and we have unity in what we're decreeing, that turns the nation. Do we need shift? Yeah. Shift happens when we pray. So, uh, you know, uh, let's just stand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. We are a church that is alive and warriors that operate in the power and mindset of the living God. Hallelujah. We are not defeated. Hallelujah. Okay. Go ahead. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you. We, every single one of us, 
We don't have to try to get it. It's in us. We all have it. But we have to activate it by stepping out and doing it. Listen, God is breaking off self-pity. There's a self-pity thing that wants to keep you going around and around and around that mount. That's got to stop. Cut the root system in that vision. When I saw the blood, it went to the roots. And it went to the roots of every part, of every type of captivity. And it, it made it so easy to pluck up. It's that easy. Don't let the mindset tell you. She's full of baloney. Don't listen to her. She's just too emotional. <laughs> Don't let them lie to you. Because God has a way of escape for all of our issues. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come up here and prophesy. You guys got a word? Come on. Just release something. You got a word? Hallelujah. Let's just begin to give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah! 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 Jesus, Son of David, have mercy! Have mercy! Have mercy upon us! And I prophesy to myself. So, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, if I declare and decree, I prophesy that every root system that is in me, that is in my bloodline, I take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus. I put the axe to the root, Father. I put the axe to the root, Father, of witchcraft. I put the axe to the root, Father, of rebellion. I put the axe to the root of, of addiction and a lying and deceit. In Jesus' name, I declare and decree this day, I'm stepping into the new. The old has passed away, and I step into the new. I declare and decree everything around me is changing. I declare and decree I have the mind of Christ. I hear the voice of my Father, and I do what he tells me to do. I say what he tells me to say. I go where he tells me to go. I declare I'm walking in the new freedom that comes by the blood, 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 the blood of the Lamb. Earlier, I uh, kept hearing the word that was released through me yesterday. And the word is, God is greater. Greater than your sickness. Greater than your pain. Greater than your sorrow. Greater than your shame. He is greater than anything. He is more than everything. Greater. He is the greater one. Whatever it is. Whatever that root system is. Depression. Oppression. Bankruptcy. Any kind of negative thing that we've experienced in our families and in ourselves. He is greater. He is the greater one. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We decree and declare that no weapon that has been formed, the blood of Jesus annihilates it. Annihilates it in the name of Jesus. I prophesy that this word is seed, incorruptible seed. This word that Pastor Tricia released today, it is incorruptible seed that is going into our spirit and it is going to bring forth fruit and we are not going to look like the same congregation that we were in the name of Jesus. We have authority. We have authority in the name of Jesus. And I truly believe that this word mercy has settled into us where we understand and know that we are his ambassadors here in the earth and we have the authority to shift and change things in Jesus name. So I was in Song of Solomon this morning and and it says that he kisses us with the kisses of his mouth and he he draws us into his chambers but there was one line that struck me and it says when we run to him so father i just decree 
that we are a people running to you. Father, we repent for complacency. Lord, and the other word that is speaking to me personally, I release. He says, what are you hungry for? Where's your appetite? What are you feeding yourself? And so, Father, we repent where other things have filled our appetite. Lord, that our appetite will be for you and you alone. That we will be the people, Lord, on this earth to be filled with your glory. And going from glory to glory to glory to glory. Glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, so while Pastor Trisha was preaching, I, I just saw a vision, and the Lord was showing me. He was showing me the 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 the, the building itself, or the church, King of Kings, and it represented the body of Christ. And around our property, there were three whirlwinds, just three whirlwinds. I don't know, Trinity, if, if, if anybody gets something, just let me know. But it was three surrounding our properties. And while they were spinning, reaching as far as the, the, the eye could see, they turned into fire. And somebody prophesied about fire earlier today. And so the, the, the glory of the Lord fell upon the church, and not the building, but the but the but the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ, the glory of the Lord, and it was open heavens above this building, above the body. And, and then I saw in the pond, the glory was, was causing the fish to grow. And, and they were growing so big that they didn't have any more space and they started coming out as if to find somewhere to, to share their power and their strength. So the, so the fish is the harvest. Yeah. yeah, so Father, I just decree right now a harvest over this region in the name of Jesus so big, Lord, that it would just exceed our expectations, Father. We decree and prophesy harvest over this region in Jesus' name.
hearts up there. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time for freedom. Abandon, abandon my cold religion. My heart's on fire. We hear the sound. We hear the sound. The sound of revival coming. I know what mine is. You know what yours is. All right? So, Lord, we just decree and declare that we are we choose to break covenant. I choose to break covenant. Allegiance with the enemy. Allegiance with the enemy. We reject your lie. We reject your lie. Of delay. Of delay. Of defeat. Defeat. Of imprisonment. Of imprisonment. Of stubbornness. Of stubbornness. Of fear. Of fear. Of dread, of dread, of lies, of lies, deception, deception, the lie that says we can't move on, the lie that says we can't move on. We cut covenant with you. We cut covenant with you. And we thank God for the blood of Jesus. And we thank God for the blood of Jesus. And we make covenant. And we make covenant with the great I am. With the great I am. The mercy of God. The mercy of God. The breaker of God. The breaker of God. The zeal of the Lord. The zeal of the Lord. Awakening. Awakening. Healing. Healing. Deliverance. Deliverance. Prosperity. Prosperity. Safety. Safety. El Shaddai. El Shaddai. A man of war who goes before us and fights for us. I am covered in the blood. And I decree breakthrough. I decree breakthrough. I will not be postponed any longer. Be postponed any longer. And the momentum, the, momentum the, acceleration the acceleration of the presence of the Lord. Of the presence of the is Lord upon me. Is upon and me. And I will cross over and go through my doors. And go through my door. In Jesus' name. Amen.